Hi there, this is Gershon Zinger from drzinger.com. I want to talk to you about the risk of infection uh, in hand surgery. So we're going to start with a case. This is a 75-year-old female admitted after a motor vehicle accident. This is an actual case at our hospital. She had an emergent aorta repair and she spent four weeks in the ICU, multiple orthopedic injuries, humeral shaft, ankle fracture, wrist and hand injuries. What's her risk of a post-op complication? How do you figure it out? Recently, there was an article that was published in the Journal of Hand Surgery, and uh, it seems to answer this question about predicting risk. So let's talk about how it applies to our patient. So they used a database of over 50,000 patients. They identified risk factors and complications for up to 30 days post-op were followed with this database and focused in this case on hand surgery patients. Then they compared the prospective risk to the actual risk they found in a patient's subsequent analysis. This is big data methodology. They use a national database. And the, the basis of their evaluation was the American College of Surgeons National Surgical Quality Improvement Program database. A lot of patients, but they were focused again on the risks of infection with hand surgery. So they took this one period, a 10-year period between 2005 to 2015, looking at both inpatient and outpatient surgeries, and they followed them for 30 days post-op. Um, and they looked at these complications, okay, infection, of course, deep surgical infection, sepsis, pneumonia, urinary tract infection, wound dehiscence, cardiac pulmonary, and other categories of infection, okay? Now they started with an educated guess of which variables were important. This is based on prior data. They looked at 12 uh, total variables. You'll see that not all of these turned out to be okay. And they did a two-step plan. Number one, from 2005 to 2013, they used a chi-square uh, for association between variables and complications. And then they did a validation court for the two-year period from 2014 to 15 looking at what variables were actually related and what was their relative uh, risk. How, how is it weighted? Okay, and what they found, first of all, and we'll kind of skip to the bottom line and then go over the factors, was they found it nicely categorized the factors based on risk. So patients that had zero to three points on their scale had a very low risk of a, any complication. Those for, with four to seven points had a 10% and high risk was 30%. This is a, a great uh, predictor that uh, turns out to be accurate with time. Okay, so they found these seven factors and the weight of each one. Now, at the top of the list is serum albumin, giving apparently nutritional status and ability to heal, maybe overall status of the patient's health. And that had the highest risk score of five points alone. Congestive heart failure, hematocrit, creatinine, uh, to, I'll skip male because that you can't change. Tobacco abuse or use in this case and the serum sodium is low. So let's go to our example and see how she matches up with these risk factors, okay? So this is the same case. Now the question, let's take a look. Her serum albumin was indeed low uh, and that gives her five points. No history of congestive heart, heart failure. Her hematocrit was a little bit low, giving her another two points. And the rest, it turns out to be fine. She didn't have any of the other rest. So she had a seven out of 15 point total. I have to look at the total number of points, but seven points give, puts her in the mid range, 10 to 15%. All right, so again, let's look at the factors a little more closely. Uh, most of them are lab related, albumin, hematocrit, creatinine, and sodium. Sex, which we can't change as we're at two points, congestive heart failure, heart failure of two points, Smoking status, interestingly, was the lowest with only a weighting of one. And the relative risk, two versus 10 versus 30%. So albumin is the most important and I think should be obtained preoperatively for most elective surgeries. Smoking status seemed to have a very mild effect on risk. That might be important for non-union of bone as far as that risk specifically, but for perioperative complication in the first 30 days, very small risk. So with major surgery, risk can be calculated and be part of the preoperative consent. In an emergent surgery, potentially, it can be delayed until the hematocrit, 
the creatinine and the sodium are corrected. That might take a day or two. And that can change your score by five, uh, significantly impacting the risk of perioperative complication. And elective surgery, you can wait even longer. You can correct the albumin and certainly stop smoking if you have any luck with that. Thank you very much. Risk of infection. I think it was a very useful article.